All right, boys and girls, we got an awesome shotgun to show you here today. This is a 940 Pro. Let's check her out. Hang on. Let's uh let's wait for the smoke to clear. Well, that uh that escalated kind of quickly, I suppose. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you're all having a great day. Uh, we got this Mossberg in here, this 940 Pro. This is a sweet shotgun, and you know that we're big fans of the 930. Uh, we did bring the 930 out just to kind of show some comparative shots between the two guns. They are relatively similar, but with quite a few differences as well. They're both gas operated, but this 940 is sweet. Uh, the first 940 that I was exposed to was Jerry Mitchellick's personal gun that he brought down to shoot with us. It was actually a, a prototype uh, when they just originally got the 940 JM line uh, in there. So the Pro version does take a lot of the same refinements that Jerry has on his personal competition shotgun and it, it goes into the tactical model. So this is what you would, they call it the Pro, but this is the one that you would probably just call the tactical model. That's the verbiage I would use, but that's just me. Um, but it's a great shotgun. This one has an 18 and a half inch barrel. It is gas operated. Nice knurling there on the charging handle, plenty of knurling. Uh, one thing that they did as well for the uh, bolt release is they added this nice large tactical latch. Uh, the old one is like a kind of just a basic button. The fore end has some slightly different texture than the older 930. Um, it's nice and slim, which is one thing I noticed about this gun over the uh, earlier version and definitely lightweight, extremely lightweight shotgun. Um, you'll notice also that this one has a micro red dot mounted on top of it. This is a little Hollison that's on here. Now, uh, the newer 940s, uh, as well as the 590Ss, are cut for optics mounts, okay? And then you can actually still mount a traditional type of, uh, you know, pick rail on top with the plate in place if you want to do that. All right, you do have a barrel clamp here on the end that gives you a couple of M-lock accessory slots on this particular gun. It has a standard uh, type of extension, just like you would see on the 930. You got a fiber optic front sight. Uh, these guns are threaded for chokes. You do get a couple of different options for chokes in this particular gun, if that's what you want to do. They stayed with the tank safety. Uh, that's pretty standard for most of your Mossbergs and things like that. Also, one thing that they did, uh, the length of pull on the uh, older 930 is about 14 inches. What they wanted to do on the tactical models was give you the option to add these spacers here in the stock to get that uh, length of pull out to, you know, whatever length you want. This one's about 14 and a half inches, so it's a little bit longer length of pull than the standard uh, 930 that we have over there. And actually, for me, it's a perfect length of pull. It really is. But you can fully adjust the stock for your length of pull, and that was a consideration for a lot of the shooters. One of the things they also changed on this is they enlarged uh, the feeding port, and that really does allow those shells to get in there a lot better, especially when you're doing like a, a double stack reload like you see some of the three gun shooters doing. But I do like the, the low profile of the red dot on this particular gun. It's pretty cool. So let's shoot it a little bit more. Now, there in the intro, those were some of the Firebird targets. Uh, that were on the, our shoot steel uh, gongs here that we just took out, our poppers. We got a few more that we can probably blow up real quick, and then we're gonna move some cameras around and probably, we're gonna shoot uh, those watermelons here, and I've got a can of hominy. We're gonna shoot those with some slugs and just see what it looks like for fun. So let's take out the rest of our exploders, and I can demonstrate this mag well. The safety's on. Now I'm terrible at this, but I'm just gonna do my best to show you what I was talking about is when you take two shells like that and you want to load two at a time, see having that, that large uh, well in there, it, it, uh, the, the ports there just gives you a lot more room to get the shells in. And you know, with a bit of practice, you, you could top this thing off pretty quick. So that was six. So the tube holds six and one in the chamber. I don't think you can ghost load these like you can on the Benelli's. All right, let's take out the rest of our exploders here. It's gonna be loud. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> All right. It's like the Wizard of Oz out here every time I squeeze the trigger. I love those targets. Uh, those are Firebird targets. You take those uh, little adhesive backer off of there and you stick it on there. That's what they look like. They just go on there. It's kind of cool. I like uh, using them in the videos just for a little flash and all. That was some uh, Winchester Military Buckshot. That's a nine pellet double aught. The, this is the exact same stuff that we issue to our troops. Um, it's okay. It patterns all right, but you can see it functions uh, quite perfectly here out of the 940. I'm gonna take and print a few of these slugs just to make sure my dot is perfectly on. Uh, I wanted to men make mention, I pulled this thing out of the box, threw a slug in it, put it right on the bolt at 25 yards. You can see, you might be able to see where the paint's missing. But the first slug right out of the box hit the bolt right dead center. It was perfectly zeroed right out of the box, which, uh, I mean, that's a level of detail. It's nice to see. And that's how I zero these types of shotguns. I don't know how y'all handle it. Let me know in the comment section below what you do. But what I like to do is take a slug and zero my red dot for the slug at whatever distance I want the gun to be perfectly zeroed at. So 25 yards, get the slug dead on with the red dot, and then the buckshot hits where the slug is looking. Let me know if I'm the only person that does that or if I'm crazy or go ahead and let the comment section just light up, that's fine. Okay, that's just what I do and it works for me. I'm gonna shoot a few of these slugs. These are the Berniki Special Forces Short Magnum. This is a great shotgun slug. It doesn't have a ton of recoil, but it still has a good generally heavy payload. Uh, let's see, that's what the box looks like got the you know vehicle on the box with the SWAT team guy let's see so we're getting out of this slug this is a, a one and one quarter ounce slug okay the special forces penetrator um, at the muzzle you're getting 1476 um, foot-pounds or no that's a, your velocity that's yielding 2538 foot-pounds of energy out of this particular slug and I would imagine that's probably tested from a 24 inch barrel. In our, in our experience, we've seen that most of these uh, ammo companies test out of longer barrels. This is an 18 and a half inch barrel, but just to give you some nerdy data. All right, I'm just gonna try a piece of steel out here before we shoot. Yeah, <laughs> it's shooting right where it's looking. So I'm happy with that. So we, uh, why don't we send one of these into a watermelon, Chad? What do you think? Do it? Left or the right? Which one? Left? Okay. So we're going to shoot this watermelon on the left here with the one and quarter ounce Berniki Special Forces Short Magnum out of our Mossberg 940 Pro. I'm going to shoot it dead center, baby. This is going to be a perfect watermelon shot. Y'all ready for this? All right. Here we go. Tang safety. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one, and bonsai. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool right there. I mean, obviously it's always great to see a watermelon coming apart. I like shooting them with slugs because it just makes a big giant mess. I mean, buckshot, don't get me wrong. We've done some videos in the past where we shot, you know, like a pumpkin or something with buckshot, and you can see all the individual pellets come out of the hard rind of the pumpkin really well, and that's cool, but watermelons, I just feel like you have to have a slug. So, this next slug that we're gonna try, oh, here we go. Let me make sure this gun can handle threes. It says three inch shells, okay, we're gonna run threes. All right, this is the Berniki Black Magic. Uh, this is the slug with the bear on the box. I know I say that all the time, but this one is a one and three eighth ounce slug. Look at that high brass joker. Now, this slug generates an absolute ton of recoil. It, it kicks really hard. So that's why I want to test it in this gun to see if the gas system and you know recoil system, if maybe the semi-auto action kind of soaks up a little bit of that recoil. They did slightly redesign the gas system on the 940 to make it a little bit more reliable. Mossberg claims uh, that you can <laughs> that you can shoot about 1,500 rounds through this gun before you have to clean it. That's a pretty tall order because shotgun ammo is pretty dirty. So if they can say that, they must be doing something right here. Um, and I'll tell you too, with Jerry's competition gun, even the prototype that I shot of the 940, 
I was very impressed at just how smooth it was. I mean, we were putting thousands of rounds through it. You know, Jerry shoots his a lot, and I never saw it uh, have a malfunction a single time. So here's our Berniki. We're going to shoot the other watermelon on the right over here. And uh, here we go. One and three eighth ounce slug. Let me see. That is moving at 1,502 feet per second at the muzzle, likely out of a 24 inch barrel, generating 3,014 foot pounds of energy. That's, that's, that's a powerful shotgun slug, y'all. All right, here we go. Man, you know, if I had time, I could probably go behind the berm and find that, that projectile just right over the edge of the berm. Because what will happen is when it goes through something like that, that's kind of fleshy, it's going to you know, have that initial velocity dump where it loses a little bit of speed. Then it's going to hit the berm. But generally, depending on what it goes through, it may not have enough speed to actually just get down in the dirt. Sometimes it will tumble. And we have found, especially these Bernikis, this Black Magic Slug, we have gone past the berm and sure enough, about 10 feet past the berm, it'll tumble and just wind up right over the berm. It's the craziest thing. And see, if you're a caster, you can just take that slug and throw it back in your casting pot and reuse it. Little, little nerdiness, but we'll, we'll take what we can get. All right, now we got a can of hominy. Now, these things come apart really great. Like, and I know people give me crap about wasting food or whatever, but, but look, it, it's in the name of science. Like, sometimes you just wanna watch a can of hominy explode. I mean, am I right? So. We're gonna try out, so we already did the Special Forces Short Magnum. Uh, we did the Berniki. I'll tell you what, we're gonna try out a, uh, a Broadhead Hexalit. Ooh, wait a minute, no we're not. We're gonna use the Anti-Terror Slug. Okay, now look, this is, this is not a Berniki commercial, I promise. Like, guys, I use Berniki, this is just that, I buy this ammo, like, it's just what I like, okay? All right. On this, we've got, this is a one ounce slug, but it's a super hardened antimony slug, okay? It's moving at uh, 1,680 uh, feet per second, generating 2,639 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle, again, likely out of a 24 inch barrel. Can of hominy, baby. Here we go. That can of hominy is doing its thing, and this, this slug is a humming. Okay, you ready? All right, we're gonna make us a Mexican feast. <sighs> oh, they come apart so good. You can never go wrong shooting a can of hominy and that never gets old no matter how many times I do it. I just love watching that hominy come apart. It's amazing. So. Uh, we're going to take a moment to reset the range because we've made a giant mess and uh, I'll put a few sodas out there. Maybe we'll try some buckshot and maybe some other cool loads. So uh, we'll be right back. All right, we got a few more of the uh, Special Forces short magnums. We're going to shoot them out of the 940 here. Take out a few sodas just for fun. Why not? Okay, here we go. These are slugs. Ooh, got one more. How about the little plate in the, in the rear? Yes, sir. <laughs> Heck yeah. You know, I wanted to pick up the speed a little bit and shoot a little faster with something that recoils a little bit. You know, and those rounds, they kick pretty hard, but I would say really not that bad. I don't really feel like the recoil impulse is too terrible or, 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 or self-destructive, if you will. Um, this gun will run, obviously, an extremely wide variety of different uh, types of loads, birdshot, buckshot, slugs, you name it. It's pretty much gonna run it just fine. I mean, when you get into some of the extremely light stuff, like the 1,200 feet per second handicap loads that are only 7 8 ounce or something like that, those might struggle here and there, but then again, probably run them just fine. Um, I typically don't run shotgun ammo that light. Uh, in this type of role, you know, this type of shotgun for me is, is definitely a slug or, or buckshot delivery device uh, for what I would use it for. And I do like how light the gun is overall. I know I mentioned that before, but I always like to go back to a point that I want to reiterate in the video would be that the, the weight of this gun and the maneuverability 
of this shotgun I really do like a lot. Um, I'll shoot a couple of more loads here just for fun. Uh, we still have some steel to knock down and I got one straggler soda to take out. Let's try some buckshot ammo. Uh, let's see. Now this stuff is kind of interesting. Maybe this is a good test. This is some 1,325 feet per second, nine pellet, uh, two and three quarter inch Fiocchi buckshot. But you also notice that it's got this little weird low brass hole on it, which I always thought was, was, was so strange about this particular ammo. Let's run a few of these and see how they, uh, how they work here in the 940. I would consider this to be, a, you know, maybe a, a light buckshot load. You know, it just ain't got the high brass hole on it. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't consider the speed stupid or anything. Let's try it. See if it runs. Okay. All right, we'll take out the poppers. A few rounds of buckshot here. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. I hope everybody had a great day. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. I think that pretty much hits all the high points here on the uh, 940 Pro. If it's something you're looking into, definitely check them out. Uh, Price-wise, I think these the MSR, MSRP on these things is about 1333 or something like that, just under 1400 bucks. Um, so definitely, you know, not an inexpensive option, but a good quality shotgun. Mossberg has really solidified themselves in the shotgun world. Not only do they make great pumped uh, guns, but they make some wonderful semis as well. So check it out. That's your 940 Pro. Definitely something worth looking into. Always a good day to get some boomsticks out on the range. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you all had a great day. We'll see you soon.